all right it's been a while since i've made a video so i am going to show you guys how to make a well the most realistic shuttle you can make in K Kerbal space program so you're going to start off with the mark 3 cockpit cockpit also known as uh mk3 i'm gonna go to aerodynamics and get the aerodynamic nose cone right here it's the third one to the leftist and you can see it's a little bit of different color so if you right click or if you press this color right here you can get the dark version which matches a whole lot better now i'm not sure if this part is accurate but basically what we have to do is um we have to put one M mark three monopropellant uh, part you want to go to payload and get ourselves the mark three cargo bay uh the largest one then you want to take the small one put it right And then you want to take a uh, where could it be? Oh, you want to take the uh, rocket fuel fuselage short. Just plop it on there. Go to structural, and at the end, I have the making history DLC, which is kind of needed. Um, but it's not really necessary. Oh, uh, well, to make a shuttle, uh, then yes, you don't really need it, but to make a realistic version. Then you just want to take the vector engine, and what you could do is, um, click the two symmetry. Put it right there. You just want to put one right there. I put it a little bit too high. And now, um, the wings are the last part you want to make. But to make the orbital maneuvering uh, engines, you could use wing parts. But what I like to do is to use the short. Um, mark 2 to mark 1 at a 1.25 meters adapter I just put it in there uh, you could use the aerodynamic nose cone from before or uh, to make it look better you could use the advanced nose cone type 1a but I'm just going to use this one and what I like to do is uh, have a kind of seven uh, cluster of the uh, puff monopropellant engine it's just way too small for its size so uh, go six times symmetry Um, W. So it's like that. Then you want to take another one with just zero symmetry. offset it to make it a little bit more even yeah that's close enough so now let's just actually have symmetry and we want to put it kind of on the top However, you can change it any way you want um, with the, um, for making it better torque or fixing the torque. 
and I recommend, uh, I highly recommend using the Kerbal Engineer Redux mod. Uh, if you don't have it, just why don't you? It's really necessary. I also don't know why they didn't put it into the stock game. It would be really helpful if they did. So now, still with our two time circle symmetry, you want to go to aerodynamics and get this big S uh, space plane tail fin. And we want to put it, yeah, we want a toggle snap. So we want to put them just slightly apart. And the reason why you want to do that is because in real life the shuttle can do this. And if it gets inverted, just uh, press deploy direction inverted. And this is kind of like um, the caveman version of um, air brakes. But uh, if you're trying to make it realistic, you can just use this. So let's just uh, retract it again. And we need to work on the inside. So what you want to do is go ahead and put, what I like to do is put um, a remote guidance unit. Whenever it pops up. There it is. And then we could just uh, go over to the utility section and get the MK2 crew cabin. Just offset it so that it's correct. And then offset it to the bottom, but you want to make sure that it's not really touching it because it's going to look quite ugly and, you know, interfere with some things. Now, thankfully, you can have it so that there's a tiny bit sticking under because it's a little bit flat, but uh, as we all know, do not clip parts or else everybody will hate you. Uh, not really, just don't really clip that much. You could clip a little bit, but not much. So now we want to do, go to the coupling section. And get ourselves a MK2 Clampotron. So that we can actually dock uh, to things like the International Space Station. You want to make sure that this symbol and that line are on the top. And you want to make it so that it doesn't really touch the top. Just like that. And then you want to pull it over here. And then if you close this, you can see it's okay. Next, what I like to do is instead of having a decoupler, I have a Clampotron docking port sir, which is the really big one. And the reason why we don't have this four sized um, cargo bay and just that is because of this right here and it's wasting a, a little bit of room. Uh, and I pointed to it even though uh, the, you can't see that. So this right here, then, uh, um, since we have a little bit of room left over, we can go ahead and put on the Rocco Max uh, 16. I'm just gonna say 16 and things like that. And you wanna press Alt because it's going to stick to the fairing. Then you want to take this 
um, jumbo 64 fuel tank. Bless you. Color it orange, just because. Close it all up. And now we're going to work on the wings. So what you want to do is take these big S delta wings, if you get the joke, um, and you want to put them to the back. Now uh, you may have seen, I actually saw a video that told you that you actually needed to put closer to the front or the center of mass. And I did that, but it's very unstable, and one rule is, if I just turn this on, the farther away your center of lift is from your center of mass, the more stable it is, but the less control you have, and the closer it is, the less stable it is, but the more control you have. So now we just kind of need to offset it like that. But you need to be careful because the gimbal of the engines are kind of crazy. And next, just for making it more easy, you can uh, uh, take these big S wing streaks. And we could just use shift and WASD to rotate it correctly. That is correct. So now let's use the shift offset to move it inwards. That is good. And next we want to take these big S Elevon 2 and put it right here, closer to the inside. I want to put it kind of far away. Next we want to take the big S Elevon 1. that and now we can flip this upside down by just clicking on the cockpit not pressing a there you go and we want to move it upwards Sticking in a little bit. That's better. All right, so that is about good enough. Next, we want to go back to the cockpit. Rotate it again. And since these are quite close, I would um I would do is move this a little bit outside. Move this even more outside. And one thing that um, it kind of has is a little bit of an underwing here. So you could just take um, this. This would probably be better. Um, and 
that is good enough. So now that we are finished with the orbiter, which as you can see is looking fine and dandy, we want to switch the editor over to the VAB. Now we want to rotate it a little bit. Now either you could have it like this, which is kind of like the more realistic way because then you'll have to rotate it. Or you could do it like this. Now I'm going to do it the old fashioned way. This. Next we want to go to coupling. Get ourselves a radial coupler that is quite large. And you want to find the center of mass. And put it about there. And next, which is kind of the tricky part, is putting the ginormous uh, Saturn V parts. And this is because um, in game, the parts that you're supposed to use, which are these uh, Kerbidine uh, S314400 tank, um, is actually about the same size if you rounded off these parts as the shuttle body itself, but in reality it was a little bit bigger. And that means that we're gonna make it uh, a white paint, which is kind of different from real life, but we have to do what we have to do. Next we have to do that. And we are going to put actually a fairing And we want to put just a very small amount. And then you kind of want to build it like a nose cone. And I recommend pressing C for finer control. But I recommend being careful because a lot of times when I try to make aerodynamic nose cones using fairings, they always round off way too quickly. Nah, that looks a little bit weird. Build that again. I know that this is only actually for uh, decorational uh, purposes and making it look a little bit realistic. Uh, you don't actually need to do it. Uh, in fact, it's actually a little bit less efficient since it adds more weight to your build. But um, the Vector engines and the Clydesdale engines are already powerful enough to that a little bit of mass like this won't really hurt that much. Now one reason why um, that's the, that I said this was the, the tricky part was the Saturn V parts is because they are still too heavy for the space, for the shuttle engines. And that was a problem when I made my shuttle. But hopefully it won't be a problem for yours. I, I tested it way too much. And now to kind of match its color, you want to do black and white. Now let's just um, put, actually I don't need to put a tank, I could just go over and take the structural tube and what I like to put in this structural tube is a little bit of electricity and for better control and that one of those and then to close it off we could just 
use another one of these uh, fairings. But instead of before, we're going to... For some reason, it won't allow me to place that. But this is going to be more flat. Uh, so you don't really have to worry about fixing it. Let's try to make it flat. Close fairing and black and white. Now, what I uh, did for my original space shuttle, which uh, I had to change a little bit, was I took the fairings and I covered the entire tank and, uh, and gave it a orange color, which was black and orange, but uh, the more realistic it was, I guess. But it didn't really work that well and it kept separating off and I already put, uh, had built a lot of things onto the tank, so it just would be way too time consuming. So next we want to take the hydraulic detachment manifolds. We want to put the circle symmetry mode, not the rocket symmetry mode. We also don't want snap. Put it around the center of mass. And now we want to put the most powerful and biggest Clydesdale solid rocket boosters. Just check if that's... Oh, no, that's a little bit of off. And we just want to push these boosters all the way down. the bottom like that and um, in real life there uh, the nose cones were more like this but these are too big and if you have um, the real rescale mod then you might be able to fix it but right now we just have to use these um, nose cones And that is about it. Now, if you follow some other tutorials, they might tell you, um, now you go to the structural and use these structural pylons and then take some fuel salt so it always feeds it to the top. But this is about, you know, the bases for a space shuttle. And, uh, you will also have to rotate these to cancel out the torque and you will also have to rotate these so that um so it's all going to be uh, so there's not going to be much torque when um when you both are going to, into orbit and also when you no longer have this because this will change the amount of torque. Thankfully, it's not by that much because um, you will need to put on a lot of RCS on here, especially to make it more stable during re-entry, which you'll have to do at 40 degrees um, above the kind of flat line. And uh, I also forgot to do this, but you need to uh, to make it more realistic, I'm pretty sure you don't need this, but you take one radial mount drogue shoot and you put it right here on the top with uh, no symmetry. But this is about it. You will have to, um, you will have to put a lot of struts like this one all on here. And um, probably the important part, and the only one, like one of the only reasons why there's a giant tank in the middle, is to give it fuel. So you just use this no symmetry um, 
fuel duct. I'll just put it there. And this is a good. Now I'm gonna name this the um, test, or more like the video shuttle. And I just wanna put on caps again. Let me just save that. Now this definitely isn't the best shuttle I've made. Uh, this is probably one of the worst. Uh, and to show you a more um, a more advanced shuttle, I will open it up right now. And this one, uh, and I'm not gonna make it as good as the one I'm about to show you because it's gonna take way too long and the lag would also be pretty annoying because I've had this computer for a while and while it has served me really well it um it's not the best one since this was used more for typing emails so now I just have to go through the many many ships I've made now this is my uh no that's actually a different one This was my orange space shuttle. And um, as you can see, I completely made it orange, which um, has some problems which, with it, which is it keeps uh, breaking. As you can see, uh, I actually had it a little bit um, higher because I, this actually, uh, I actually never got far enough to experience rear entry with this one. And I've always seen people who, who manage to like make a rocket and I don't know, go to Jewel and uh, colonize everything with just no testing, which is pretty crazy for me. <clears throat> so this is my um, newer version of the space shuttle. As you can see, a lot of fuel ducts, um, and I also drained a little bit of fuel. Like right there uh, to save weight but it can actually get into orbit and that's when I actually moved these down and one thing that I should probably do is move that back get a little bit more stable and this has everything it has ladders it has RCS Werner since I have a little bit of extra fuel uh, a drogue chute landing gear because I forgot that and it's pretty nice now I would show you uh, I would actually launch this but it'll be way too laggy and I just want this to be a tutorial video so I just want to say goodbye and I'll see you tomorrow I guess or today who knows <laughs>